we have all heard incredible stories about great warriors of the past, and these stories are usually involving men. But what many might not know is that throughout history there were great women warriors as well, who also achieved amazing things that might even rival their male counterparts. From a vicious anti-Christian queen who took over a powerful kingdom and dethroned an emperor with her own hands, to another female warrior who was the commander of a great and powerful army, we bring you 10 Greatest Female Warriors. Gudit was also known as Judit and was a non-Christian queen who ruled a once powerful kingdom called Damat, a medieval kingdom in what is now Ethiopia. Around 960 AD, the queen is said to have laid waste to the city of Aksum and the countryside, and she also destroyed churches and monuments, usurped the throne from the ruling Aksumite king, and attempted to wipe out the remaining members of the royal family. Yet this queen is somewhat a great mystery, and opinions about her vary from one scholar to another. It is believed that she killed the ruling Aksumite king with her own hands and took over his throne where she reigned for 40 long years. Tales of her violence and history are still told by peasants in the North Ethiopian communities. It is traditionally believed that she sacked and destroyed Deborah Damo, the treasury and prison for male relatives of the king of Ethiopia. Lozen was a female warrior of the Chirikahua Apaches who lived during the 19th century. Apart from her prowess as a warrior, Lozen is reputed to have been a skilled military strategist as well as being highly proficient when it came to medicinal matters. Lozen was her people's spiritual leader and possessed spiritual abilities that enabled her to detect the movement of her enemies. Some have dubbed Lozen as the Apache Joan of Arc. The name Lozen is an Apache war title given to one who has stolen horses in a raid. Lozen was skillful at riding, shooting, and planning strategies. She fought alongside her brother, the war chief Victorio, and often sat beside him during warrior and council ceremonies. Victorio said that Lozen was his right hand, strong as a man, braver than most, and cunning in strategy. Lozen is a shield to her people. According to legend, Lozen would stretch out her arms with her palms facing the sky. Then she would follow the sun whilst praying to Usen, the Apache creator of life. When she felt a tingling in her hands and when her palms darkened, Lozen would know the direction from which her enemies were coming. Armed with this knowledge, Lozen would help her people avoid capture. She later fought beside Geronimo, another great prominent war chief of the Apache. Budika, 1st century AD Budika was the Celtic queen of the Iseni tribe of modern-day East Anglia, Britain, who led a revolt against Rome in 6061 AD. And this is how it all started. Her husband had left his kingdom jointly to his daughters and the Roman emperor at the time when he died. But the Romans did not acknowledge this joint rule and they simply took full control and did terrible things to Boudica and her daughters, which we will not mention here. These things created widespread resentment toward the Romans and their rule. Because of this, she was eventually chosen as the leader of her people and along with their neighbors led a fearsome assault on the Romans. She mounted a revolt against Rome which left the ancient Roman cities of Camulodunum, Ladinium, and Verulamium in ruins and over 80,000 Roman citizens of Britain dead. She was defeated at the Battle of Watling Street by the Roman governor Gaius Saetonius Paulinius, chiefly by his judicious choice of battlefield and allowing her army to cut off its own escape route by encircling their rear with their wagons, animals, and families. Boudica is said to have committed suicide by poisoning herself after her defeat. Grace O'Malley, the Pirate Queen, was Queen of Umal, chieftain of the O'Malley clan, rebel, seafarer, and fearless leader, who challenged the turbulent politics of 16th century England and Ireland. While Irish legends have immortalized Grace as a courageous woman, she was considered a brutal and thieving pirate who controlled the coastlines through intimidation and plunder. She commanded hundreds of men and some 20 ships in raids on rival clans and merchant ships. She also ran afoul of government officials who made repeated attempts to curb her activity. O'Malley's ships would stop and board the traders and demand either cash or a portion of the cargo in exchange for safe passage the rest of the way to Galway. Resistance was met with violence and even murder. The English felt they could no longer ignore her predatory sieges, so a force of ships and men laid siege to O'Malley in Rockfleet Castle. Within two weeks, the Pirate Queen had turned her defense into an attack, and the English were forced to make a hasty retreat. At the age of 56, O'Malley was finally captured by Sir Richard Bingham, a ruthless governor that was appointed to rule over Irish territories. 
She closely escaped a death sentence and over the course of time, her influence, wealth, and lens faded until the brink of poverty. Artemisia of Caria was the queen of the Anatolian region of Caria and became the ruler of Ionia as a client of the Persians. She was an ally of Xerxes during the second Persian invasion of Greece. She fought at the naval battle of Artesimian and the naval battle of Salamis in 480 BC as a commander in the Persian navy. She was the only female commander in the fleet. She is most famous for her role in the naval battle of Salamis in 480 BC, in which she fought for the Persians and distinguished herself both for her conduct in battle and for the advice she gave the Persian king Xerxes prior to the onset of the engagement. Every ancient account of Artemisia depicts her as a brave and clever woman who was a valued asset to Xerxes on his expedition to conquer Greece, except that of Thessalus, who described her as an unscrupulous pirate and a schemer. It is said she would fly either the Greek or the Persian standard from her ships, depending on circumstance and need, to avoid conflict until she positioned herself favorably for assault or escape. A legend claims that later Artemisia fell in love with a man named Dardanus, and when he ignored her, an oracle told her to jump to her death into the Aegean Sea from the Rock of Lucas. Tomoe Gozen was a female samurai warrior and was one of the best martial arts practitioners of her day and was famed as a warrior of formidable skill. She is famed for going into battle alongside the samurai warrior Minamoto Yoshinaka, who she served with absolute loyalty. According to some sources, she was also his mistress or even his wife. In one battle, she is reported to have single-handedly defended a bridge against dozens of attackers. In another, she is said to have killed many samurai warriors one after another in single combat and then killed their leader. Her most famous story is from the Battle of Awazu that happened in 1184, where Yoshinaka was finally defeated by his enemies. When the battle was lost, Yoshinaka told Tomoe he will fight to the death, but she would leave the battlefield as he would be ashamed to die fighting a woman. After killing another opposing samurai warrior, she complied and escaped. However, as she left the field, she was attacked by an enemy soldier who appeared to have lost his samurai sword as he used a pine trunk as a club to attack her. She twisted and broke it, but was overpowered and forced to become Wada's concubine. After the Wada family was destroyed, including her son, she became a nun and lived to the age of 91. Ahotep was an ancient Egyptian queen who lived in 1560 to 1530 BC during the end of the 17th dynasty of ancient Egypt and was the daughter of Pharaoh Senoctenri Amos and Queen Tetesheri. Ahotep I may have rallied the troops and played a role in defending Thebes. Ahotep actively took part in battles and other military activities. She was a queen who took care of soldiers, rode a horse, and held an important role in diplomacy. She lived like a ruler and acted like a man in politics, but at the same time she maintained her female charm. It is possible that she could have been a lifelong pharaoh's wife if Sekinenre Ta II hadn't died during the battle but he received horrible wounds to his skull and body by a Hyksos battle axe and other weapons, a bloody event he couldn't have survived. His successor was Kamose, one of Ahotep's sons with the deceased pharaoh. Ahotep had a long and fascinating life. She probably died during the reign of Thutmose I, however, this is uncertain. Joan of Arc Not just a legendary female warrior, but also a Roman Catholic saint, Joan was but a girl when visions of the Archangel Michael drove her to approach the military of Francis King Charles VII and to offer assistance in his efforts to expel the occupying English in the later days of the Hundred Years' War. Though initially mocked by these men and soldiers, Joan was taken seriously once her influence ended the Siege of Orleans in nine days. By age 17, she played a key role in commanding France's army, and her forte in the military seemed to be for strategy over the slang. The French owed much to Joan, and yet it was the Burgundians, Frenchmen loyal to England, that led to her demise. She was captured in 1430, and despite several escape attempts and rescue efforts, Joan was put on trial by the English for heresy and cross-dressing. Her visions were now derided and her armor called an atrocity. She was convicted, sentenced to death, and burned alive at the stake. Even after her death, her strategies are said to have influenced the French battle model. More than 25 years later, the Catholic Church revisited Joan's trial for heresy, overturning the charges against her in a case of too little too late.
It would be more than 460 years before Pope Benedict XV declared Joan a saint. Zenobia was a warrior queen of the Middle East who almost brought the Roman Empire to its knees and represented everything that Isis was not in her once glorious reign. Zenobia once ruled her home region Palmyra, the Syrian historical city laid waste to by the militant group. Descendant of Egyptian leader Cleopatra, Zenobia was a powerful military and economic leader in pre-Islamic Syria. She was beautiful and highly educated and made herself a ruler in the very masculine world of the Arabian desert. She took on the might of Rome, the world's greatest empire, and nearly succeeded in creating a breakaway state. The warrior queen was born in Palmyra, a Roman province in the third century centered on the city of the same name the one which ISIS militants have been blowing up throughout August for its supposedly idolatrous buildings. After the death of her husband, the king, and her stepson, Zenobia took the throne and led her army to conquer parts of Syria, Turkey, Jordan, and Egypt, and build up the Palmyrene Empire. Tamar of Georgia Tamar, or Tamara, was the daughter of the Georgian King Georgi III. Her father declared her co-ruler and heir apparent to prevent dispute after his death. After the death of her father, Tamar gained a reputation as an outstanding ruler and was dubbed King of Kings and Queen of Queens by her people. Her reign saw the bringing to heel of almost every neighboring Muslim state. Tamar played an active military role as the commander of her army. During her reign, the kingdom reached the apex of its political, economic, and cultural might. In 1201-1203, Georgians took and annexed the Armenian capitals of Ani and Divin. In 1204, Tamar's army occupied the city of Kars. In 1204, Tamar helped to found the empire of Trebizond on the southern shore of the Black Sea, whose capital is now the Turkish city of Trabzon. Queen Tamar died in 1213.